Malta offers over 300 days of sun throughout the whole year, making it a perfect destination, guys, for people to visit over the summertime, wintertime, autumn or spring. In today's video, you are going to find 10 outdoor activities that you can do in Malta. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's Alex here. I've been doing videos about Malta for the past 4 years. A lot of people are coming over to Malta after seeing my videos and they realize that this is a perfect spot throughout the whole year. Other people are watching my videos when they're planning to make Malta their home. And many of you guys are wondering what are the activities that you can do here on the island. It's such a tiny island, people think that you can get bored. Oh boy, oh boy. With all the activities, all the festivals, all the happenings that are here on the island throughout the whole year, this place never gets boring. With this being said, buckle up, I would like to give you around 10 activities that you can do if you're visiting Malta or if you're planning to move here and what you can do on your day off. I have prepared my list here and I have the whole script of this video, guys, because majority of these activities that I'm going to tell you in this video are the ones that I have personally done. And at the end of the video, once you hear all of them, I would like you guys to let me know in the comment section which activity you would like me to create it as a video. Now, without any further ado, the first one that I have for you is for those people that love the sea. The first activity, it's a scuba diving in Malta. Now, Malta offers a lot of diving schools and places that you can go to dive are all around the island. Not only in Malta, but even in Comino and even in Gozo, which are the sister islands. When it comes to scuba diving, the only spot that I was doing scuba diving in Malta, it's the Blue Grotto, which is something that I can offer you as an activity. And if you're doing a scuba diving, definitely do it in the Blue Grotto area. Not only because I live in this area, but because it's one of the best when it comes to scuba diving. Now, I know that some people might agree and some people might disagree with what I'm saying. You have so many beautiful spots. As I said, you have Comino, you have the area next to Chirkevo, where is the ferry port, you have the area in Sliema, in St. Paul's Bay, all around the island, guys. In Gozo, especially. In Gozo, you have beautiful spot for scuba diving. You can just Google the diving centers here in Malta, guys, and you can compare the prices and realize what is going to be the best for you. Don't forget the Blue Grotto, please. <laughs> Now, the second outdoor activity that you can do in Malta, it's something that I have done only 30% out of it. And this is hiking in Victoria Lines. Now, I do have a website that you can go to and uh, check the Victoria Lines, how it looks like. It's a 12 kilometers hike, guys. So I really don't suggest to do this over the summertime, especially not in July and August, unless you wake up at like five o'clock in the morning. But you have the website and I'm going to insert a part over here to see how beautiful this hike is and it's the most famous one in Malta. It ends up in Mosta, which is basically the area where I personally did. <laughs> That's why I said only 30% of this uh, hike I have done. But I'm waiting for the summer to pass and then I'm going to make the whole Victoria Lines hike. Many people that I know, they have done it and they really like it. And I definitely suggest for you to do this one as well. The next one that I have in line, oh boy, oh boy. I'm coming down again to the south part of Malta because this is where I have seen it personally myself and I know that people that have done it. And this is the third outdoor activity, rock climbing in our Lapsi. I bumped into rock climbing in Malta completely by accident. It was last year over the summertime. I wanted just to go and ten, and out of a sudden I ended up in Arlapsi in a, on a cliff, completely isolated, completely on my own. And I'm just standing and enjoying and out of a sudden I'm hearing the rock something. I'm like, what's going on? So I stood up. And I just turned to the left and I saw people climbing up and I realized that I am in a climbing area. Then I checked all my surroundings around and I found those like nails and hooks and all of that. When the people came up, I asked them like, do you guys do this to a company? Do you do it on your own? These people were certified and they were rock climbers that they did it on their own. However, you can check a website and you can find the rock climbing activities when you pay a fee and you can do this with professionals. I have personally never done this, but when I saw these people doing it, it was absolutely amazing. Now, while I was in this spot, guys, I was wondering whether I'm going to have a good internet coverage, considering it's on a cliff. Malta boosts up an absolutely amazing internet coverage, guys. 
all around the island. And in case you are visiting Malta and you would like to have internet and you're wondering in which way you can find the best coverage, the best deals, I got you covered, guys. This video is brought to you by Airlo, my go-to eSIM provider, which is also trusted by over 10 million worldwide travelers. And it's available in over 200 countries and regions. Airlo got you covered, guys. Now, what is an eSIM? eSIM stands for embedded SIM, which means it's pre-installed on your device and works 100% digitally to connect you to a telecom network as soon as you arrive to your travel destination. For example, you can see here on the screen, we are having Malta as a country. Right at this moment when I'm doing the video, guys, if you pay only 5 USD, you have 1 gigabyte data available for 7 days. Then you have another one of 2 gigabytes data for 15 days, which costs you only $7. Airlo is very simple to use, guys. Just download the application and you can choose from local eSIMs, regional eSIMs or global eSIMs. For example, on my recent stay when I was in Thailand, you might have seen the videos that I posted back in January, I used Airlo for unlimited data calls for those 15 days while I was visiting Thailand. The best thing that I could have done because it got me covered for me to do live streams while I was abroad. Airlo, as I said, you can use it worldwide. Whichever country you're trying to go, just go through the search button and find the location where you're traveling, check all the packages that they're offering and now the best thing i do have a discount code for you guys which is alex and malta 3 to benefit of 3 usd off on your data plans one more time i would like to say thank you to airlo for partnering in this video and now let's move on to the activity number four here I have something for those people that love cycling. Cycling in Malta, it's something that definitely you have to do it, especially if you're visiting in more of the cooler months, even in the summertime, guys. There are so many people that are cycling at the moment in Malta. And if you're wondering where is the best area, for me personally, I love cycling in Dingli. Talking about these activities, the activity number five that I have for you guys, it's kayaking in Comino. Oh boy, oh boy. This is perfect throughout the whole year, especially over the summertime. There's so many beautiful cliffs and caves that you can go with the kayak, guys. One of the best areas that I do love kayaking is the site of Marsa Schlock and Marsa Scala. However, of course, the more cinematic where you can take the best shots are kayaking in Comino. Speaking about Comino and kayaking and being on the sea, I have the sixth outdoor activity that you can do in Malta, and this is rent a boat and explore all the islands around Malta. For example, you can go on a boat to Comino, you can go with a boat to Gozo, you can stay in the base, you can go to Crystal Lagoon, you can go to the Blue Lagoon, you can go to Ramla Bay, you can come back to Malta and stay in the base in the south or in the north. You can also do a sunset cruise. Renting a boat in Malta, there are so many different websites where you can find a good rental company. Regardless of which company you're going to use, guys, sailing on a boat in Malta, especially over the summertime, it's something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Number seven, another activity that you can do on the sea. Jesus, I should have named this video Sea Activities in Malta. <laughs> this is for those of you that you like surfing. Surfing in Eintufieja. There is a Malta surf school that is in Eintufieja and the owner is an Italian guy which I have been in touch several times for us to create a video so maybe I should do a video with him. It is very safe to surf in Malta as well. Unfortunately if you are watching this from the US and you're thinking that we are having those big like 10 feet long uh, waves and you're gonna have like the perfect cinematic shots like the GoPro. <laughs> No, Malta doesn't offer really big waves over here. It is more of like a sports fun activity that definitely those that like surfing, I suggest you to do it here in Malta, especially in Eintufieja and also in the Golden Bay area. We're moving on. I have three more activities that you can do. And now we are coming to the activity that honestly, I was undecisive whether I should insert it in today's video or no. And this is number eight, horse riding in Golden Bay. I love animals and to be quite frank with you, I didn't want to include this in the video but I know that it's an activity and whether I mention this or no, still it will be ongoing. You do have a website where you can book this and you can do it. I personally wouldn't do it to be quite frank with you, I feel sorry for the horse. Once I get on a camel and never again, 
so I don't think I will be doing this activity. So just in case someone is voting for me to do horse riding in Eintofieha or Golden Bay, uh-uh. It's not happening, but I'm just putting this out there as an activity for you guys because some of you do like to get on a horse. Now we are moving on to the ninth activity that I have for you guys. And this is something that I haven't done and it's been in the making for the past few months, few years, I would say. Wine tasting in Malta. The wine in Malta is so delicious, it's beautiful. We have wine cellars, we have wine fields, and we have areas where you can do and you can book with your friends to go on wine tasting. But other people that they have done wine tasting in Malta, I will mention one of them, Marsovin, they really loved it. So I think I should, you know what? I think I should do this as an upcoming video. Yes, an outdoor activity, wine tasting in Malta. Delicious. <sighs> Last but not least, or maybe my personal favorite from all the outdoor activities that I'm going to mention in today's video, it's the activity number 10. I left the best for last. It's the experiencing a traditional Maltese festa, especially in the summertime when they start. I have done so many live streams, so many videos about the festas, which you can find them on my YouTube channel, guys, to see the whole vibe, how it goes, when they take the statue out on a Sunday and then throughout the whole week, they're having the bandas around Malta, they're doing the fireworks. I know that for some people it might be annoying to hear the bomb fireworks at 8 o'clock in the morning, but this is the tradition in Malta, guys. I have done recently uh, several of my live streams of the Festa in Xira, in Emsida, now I'm doing the one from Zuri. So many festas are here on the island and uh, Maltese people, they really love their festas, they love the tradition and the culture and how they celebrate it. It's always filled up with so much fun, with so much positive and beautiful vibe, guys, that you definitely have to do this. I know it sounds strange to say it's an activity. It's more of like experiencing the tradition in Malta. But if you ask me, the best one that you can find here in Malta, it's definitely the one in Zuri, the one in Zeytun, and the one in Bormla as well. Here we are coming to the end of the video, guys. One more time, I'd like to say thank you to Airlo for partnering up in today's video. Don't forget to use my code anywhere you travel around the world. Whether you're traveling to Malta, to Thailand, to wherever you are going, please make sure to use Airlo, the eSIM provider, and make sure to use my code AlexInMalta3 to benefit of 3 USD off on your data plan. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like it down below and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until I see you in my next one. Bye!